Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is OG Okpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, OG. Good morning, Tundu. Good morning, Pink. Doctor. My favorite color. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, now I know. <laughs> the United States Embassy in Nigeria on Tuesday announced a stricter visa application process for Nigerians. The embassy said in a statement that moving forward, applicants, including frequent travelers who use the interview waivers for renewers, otherwise known as the Dropbox process, will now have to appear for interviews each time they applied. This news has roused a lot of social media reactions, with many blaming the current administration for the influx of American visa applications. The U.S. Embassy had come under intense criticism in recent times for its high rate of visa refusals for Nigerians, especially those applying for student visas. Um, you know, yesterday, I think Wednesday, this story was trending all over social media and people attacking the administration, saying that, you know, now that now we really see the reason why um, the United States has put this Dropbox process um, in place, because obviously the United States is getting so many visa applications because people are leaving Nigeria. They all want a better future for themselves. And so you know, necessarily these are the steps that the United States will take to implement and stopping uh, uh, Nigerians from coming to their country. And the issue of the student visa, which is, you know, one of the um, problems that the United States are facing is that there are so many people coming in to take the financial aid away from the, you know, students in America. And so, you know, this is a, a problem. It's a developing story. So, you know, well, visa policy is a prerogative of the, uh, you know, host country destination Absolutely. you know and it's not a thing uh, that any other country can dictate they determine their own policies exactly but the u.s embassy in nigeria has not said that people cannot apply you can also still apply but those who fell in the category of uh, dropbox applications you will now have to come for an interview yeah so you cannot assume that you know because you fall into a dropbox i think you, you qualify for dropbox if you had uh, taken previously yes, it's just a two-year visa. an easier yeah. process yes. for Nigerians to apply for the visa. Yes. So what we can just say is that, look, every application should you know, be considered on its own uh, merit. Mm -hmm. And in any case, stricter controls over uh, visa applications will seem to be consistent mm -hmm. with the Trump administration's with policy Trump administration. on immigration. Correct. He, having famously once said that uh, people from all these shithole countries did he mention Nigeria, by the way? He you did, know, actually. He mentioned Indian Nigeria and Haiti. No, yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't want to repeat that. <laughs> but it reminds me, this is a moment for self-reflection as well. I'm reminded of what you said at the beginning of the program. You were um, referring to Godwin Emefele's comments about how Nigerians will try and circumvent policies. Nigerians have a really high, I think it's, it's 14, no. South Africa, I believe, is 14% who overstay. Mm. Nigeria is much higher. Yes, so Nigerians do have this reputation. Unfortunately, those of us who, individuals who toe the line are tarred with the same brush as people who don't. And we're all being viewed with suspicion at this point, which is why they've had to suspend this. I hope they haven't scrapped it entirely. It's scrapped. Entirely. Entirely. There's oh, no more drop process. Well, and it may it's be indefinitely. Reviewed. It may reviewed well, in, that's what they the said. We don't know if it's maybe This is the situation for that. Which, which is sad. It, yeah. was, it was for our convenience as Nigerians. Absolutely. And it's the same Nigerians who have now but can you imagine how many we are? We're like over 200 million people. Yes. And so now we have to all queue up for yes. this whole process yes. all over again. It's, it's, it's going to be quite difficult. It's a big problem. Because people went and did their damnness to circumvent policies. It's this thing that we seem to do here. All right. Yes. Well, OK, still here in Nigeria, Jumia, one of Africa's largest e-commerce companies, which was recently listed in the New York Stock Exchange, is now facing a class action lawsuit. The lawsuit revolves around a damning Citron research report where it alleged that Jumia had failed to state their F1 filing that 41 percent of orders were returned, not delivered or canceled. The stock, which did very well on its first day on the New York Stock Exchange, where it went up by 75%, plunged thanks to the Citron Research Report, which accused them of fraud. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of the purchasers of Jumia Technologies AG shares on the 14th of May in Southern District of New York. Jumia, however, has responded and denied the fraud allegations. 
I mean, this is another issue that we this is embarrassing. are facing right now. Misrepresentation. It's well, embarrassing. Well, what, what Jumia is saying is that they actually, the Citron re report and the, the research that was done was based on just one month of, you know, whatever um, influx, whatever, um, you know, their canceled products were or their returns were. And it wasn't based on the whole year's uh, research. And Citron, obviously, however, has said, you know, they can go forward and argue this case because they're correct and they know that the research was done properly. And so this is one of the things that we're talking about in terms of fraud or, you know, Nigeria and Africa. We're all proud of Jumia and we're hoping that this is one case that could really overturn because, you know, Jumia's shares are plunging every moment at this, this is point. awful. Yeah. Well, I, I think there is also an issue here about consumer protection, mm -hmm. consumer rights, and the two persons who have gone to court, they are, you know, lawyers, mm -hmm. you know, and the simple point that has been alleged is that, you know, if you want to do a, an IPO mm -hmm. and you must provide information, you know, the information must be correct. Okay, you cannot Absolutely. mislead the public, you cannot mislead the consumer, you know, but they said because this is a, a retail, mm -hmm. retail uh, outfit, you know, you provide retail services and you have to give correct information about your own efficiency, the That's quality right. of service that you, you deliver, you know, in terms of number of orders that you, you get, mm -hmm. in terms of orders that are, you know, wrongly delivered or, or whatever. Yes. You know, I think it's an interesting, interesting uh, case. Yes. And I would like to see Nigerians also sometimes take out class action suits you know, we where, where their rights are involved. But here, we just take things for granted. But if the research is correct, I mean, at 41%, that goes to show a, a lot of problems with Jumia because 41% 40, of returns is huge. Yeah, it I says mean, a lot. It says a this lot. It's really of embarrassing. And it's not the first time Jumia is going, you know, with these fraud allegations. But I think a couple of months ago, they also had some fraud issues with their employees and you know, stuff like that. So I hope that Jumia clears their name uh, and, you know, things look up brightly for them, hopefully. Well, let's head over to the U.S. Following the recent abortion ban in four states in the United States, Alabama being the most recent, many women on social media are protesting in a fight for their rights. The abortion bill in Alabama, which is the most restrictive abortion bill in the United States, have pushed for a near total ban on abortion and could punish doctors who perform abortions with life in prison. Alabama's Republican backers have pushed for the bill with the express goal of overturning Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court case which legalized abortion. In response to the Alabama bill, former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton posted this message on Twitter. The abortion bans in Alabama, Georgia, Ohio, Kentucky, and Mississippi are appalling attacks on women's lives and fundamental freedoms. Women's rights are human rights. We will not go back. I mean, it feels like we're going back into the Stone Age yeah, at this ridiculous. point. It's ridiculous. All this is going to do is guarantee women will use wire hangers and other unsafe practices because to try to criminalize an abortion when it, the pregnancy occurred due to rape, for me, is intolerable, it's inhumane, or incest. Any kind well, of ban on abortion, it's against our no rights. Right. In this particular <laughs> law in Alabama, which, by the way, has been signed by the governor, uh, Ivy, I think that's her name, Kate Ivy. Yes, the she lady. She signed it yesterday afternoon. Uh, rape, no exception is made yes. for rape. No exception is made incest. for incest. Can you the imagine? only exception in Alabama, in this Alabama law on abortion, is when the life of the woman is at risk. Okay, and that's why it's called a near to taban. And any doctor that uh, attempts the procedure, you know, will be jailed for 10 years. If you no, try it at all, no, if you try it, if you attempt. complete the procedure, yes. first attempt for 10 years, if you complete the procedure, that's 99 years, which is like a... Life right. in prison, one more year. It may not stand. Yeah. Even in those other states, you know, uh, uh, Georgia, Ohio, Mississippi, the Kentucky, one was in Georgia, where yes. you already have, uh, you know, a similar law in place. They call it the heartbeat yes. deal movement. Yeah, yeah. Six weeks. That once there is a sound, you know, a fetal, any form of fetal sound, then of course you cannot abort. But the whole point pointed out by, uh, uh, in the introduction, you know, is that Roe versus Wade is set to the law, the law legalizing abortion in the United States. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court took the decision in 1973. Now, it was challenged in 1999, 
and the U.S. Supreme Court again reaffirmed it. So we're likely to have a situation now where some people will go to court and challenge this particular law in the state of Alabama. And, of course, abortion is a living subject yeah. uh, in the United States. It's likely to be a campaign issue, yeah. you know, with, uh, what's his name, uh, with some of the uh, Democratic uh, presidential candidates, Absolutely. aspirants, Absolutely. you know, Elizabeth Warren and uh, Joe Kamala, Biden. And Kamala and Harris. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you know, already speaking up. Yeah. So you are likely to see abortion you know, as one of the campaign issues. As one of the campaign issues. I, I think it's just such a terrible thing that it's they're doing. Hard. Especially in the United States, where we believe that freedom of everything is appreciated. Well, who still like, calls what? the U.S. up as a bastion of anything? <laughs> a, lot of people, don't. I, a lot of people I don't. still do. Well, I mean, the, it's still the, the I don't Alabama, have those illusions. The Republican governor of Alabama, you know, when she was signing the document yesterday, she herself said, well, it may be unenforceable in the mm. long run, uh, but that this shows that the people of Alabama, you know, uh, place a lot of value on human life. Yes, and obviously also the governor of Alabama, she is the one person who is anti-abortion. And even though she hasn't come out to say, to make a comment about the bill, everyone knows that No, she, she did. She issued a statement. She hasn't, and done, and she hasn't done a complete state statement. I place a premium on human what life, but what about the no, life of... No, her statement is available. Yeah. But what it's about available. the life of the rape victim? What about the life of the victim of incest? Mm -hmm. What about that life, you know? Mm -hmm. Really a shame. Well, all right, let's head over to Kenya. Netflix, the world's leading internet entertainment service, has just introduced Swahili subtitles to its TV and film services in Kenya. But just a few days after its introduction, it became evident to Kenyans that the translators at Netflix have a very poor grasp of the language Swahili. Kenyans on social media are now asking the streaming service to bring their inaccurate translation up to date. Let's take one slide. This is Aisha. She says, Dear Netflix, please take off those horrendous Swahili subtitles. We speak and understand English in Africa. Badass is in Punda Mbaya, though. Your translators duped you big time. Thank you. This is just one of the uh, tweets that went on in Kenya, but it's gone on and, and on and on at Netflix because uh, obviously, and now it, it shows, it goes to show that, you know, we don't even know if these translators, if these translations are correct in other languages. I mean, Kenyans have come out to speak up because obviously they're really upset. But what about the other translations like in India or yeah. other uh, languages? We, you know, we're now like wondering if this is really what they're doing. Oh, with I'm their... just going to go and write on my CV. <laughs> Fluent in Punjabi, <laughs> and then Netflix will hire me and I'll type all kinds of nonsense. Anyway, but I'm sure that uh, Netflix would, uh, would have taken no, note of this. Exactly. Yeah, it happened yesterday, so hopefully they'll correct it. Yes. Thank you, Orji. Yeah.